This video will describe how to collect a good sample to send to the Penn State Plant Disease Clinic for disease diagnosis. Our ability to figure out what is affecting your plants relies largely on the type of sample submitted, the condition of the sample, and the information provided with the sample. The first important step in submitting a sample is to collect a fresh sample and make sure it is large enough for us to do the testing that we need to do. An ideal sample would consist of several plants showing a range of symptoms and would include the entire plant as well as the roots. In many cases, sending an entire plant is not possible. If you cannot send whole plants, then the best sample would include several plant parts showing a range of symptoms such as branches, leaves, and roots. Try to collect samples showing the margin between healthy green plant material and unhealthy plant material. This picture shows an oak branch that has browning leaves at the tip of the branch with healthy leaves farther back. Collect several branches showing a range of symptoms to submit for diagnosis. For vegetables and fleshy fruit samples, collect firm specimens that show early symptoms of disease. Wrap samples in a dry paper towel and do not add any moisture. Ship samples in crush-proof packaging so they do not get damaged in the mail. It is difficult for us to determine a cause for symptoms from completely dead plants or plant parts. Once a plant dies, secondary microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria start to break down and decompose the plant material, and it is difficult for us to determine what initially caused the plant to die. Do not send in completely dead plant material like these dead leaves. Send samples that show symptoms of decline but are not completely dead yet. Fresh samples are the best samples for making a diagnosis. Collecting samples and waiting several days to submit them can cause the plant material to dry down or to start to decay, making it difficult for us to make an accurate diagnosis. Ship samples overnight via UPS or FedEx if possible. Do not ship samples late in the week, or they could sit in the mail over the weekend and start to decay, especially during the hot summer months. If you ship samples via U.S. mail, they will first be delivered to a central distribution facility at the university and then brought to our building. This can add an extra day or two to the delivery time. UPS and FedEx will deliver directly to our building. The university is not open on weekends and is closed for most holidays, so send samples early in the week and avoid shipping packages that may arrive during a holiday. Good sample packaging is just as important as collecting a good sample. Herbaceous plant material can be wrapped in a dry paper towel or newspaper before packaging for shipment. If sending whole plants with roots, then leave the roots attached, but put them in a separate plastic bag and secure the bag at the base of the plant. Ship samples in a box or other crushed proof container. Never add water or wet paper towels to a sample. This could cause the plant material to rot quickly in the mail, especially during the hot summer months. The only time we recommend using a damp paper towel or newspaper is when submitting turf grass samples. For turf grass samples, it is important to collect entire plugs of turf grass that include the grass plants, roots, and soil. Wrap the plugs in a damp paper towel or newspaper and then wrap in aluminum foil to prevent them from drying out. When sending samples to be tested for Dutch elm disease, verticillium wilt, or oak wilt, it is important to select specimens from branches showing wilted, yellowing, or dying leaves. Send several branch sections that are at least a half inch to one inch in diameter and at least six inches long. Wrap the branches in aluminum foil to prevent them from drying out. Do not allow samples to be exposed to high temperatures and do not send completely dead branches. Make sure to fill out a specimen information form to send in with each sample. This form can be found on our website or at your local county Penn State Extension office. For more information on submitting samples to the PSU Plant Disease Clinic, please visit our website at plantpath.psu.edu.